Welcome to Every Dollar Accounts with Josh and Jay. Shot a true serum for your investment and insurance questions. I'm Josh Knoll, the owner of Gulf Coast Financial Advisors, and I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Jay Stubbs, the Regional Director for First Protective. We are brought to you on the Prime Capital Investment Advisors Podcast Network. Now, we normally don't time stamp our podcast, but I think it's safe to say there's not a whole lot of normal going on right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you all that we are recording this podcast on April 14th, 2020, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, and during a time of pretty extreme market volatility and uncertainty. As many of our listeners know, Jay and I decided weeks ago that we would attack this crisis head on to the best of our ability, and we'd pivot our podcast to ideas and concepts that we thought could potentially help people navigate this crisis. So with that said, you are tuning into our Leadership in a Time of Crisis series, and you're about to hear from someone that I personally consider a leader, Tim Hakes. He is the president and owner or co-owner of Prime Capital Investment Advisors and Qualified Plan Advisors. You all recognize Prime Capital because that's my independent RIA that I affiliate with. Tim's gonna to give us a behind the scenes look at the decision making process of you know, what is really a considerable large independent RIA in a time of unprecedented time of crisis. So I can promise you all you're gonna to wanna to hear what Tim has to say. Before we get into all that though, let's have our friends from Sloth Racer kick us off. Jay, Tim, how y'all doing today? Hey, Josh, good to see you uh, on this uh, Zoom uh, podcast conference. We've done a couple of these today. It's, it's been real and it has been real fun. Uh, I'm enjoying uh, getting to, to spend some time with some of your cohorts over at Prime Capital. Well, I, as you know, I, I've bragged about them to you for, for many, many months now. You've got to meet a few of them in person, including our guest today. So Tim Hakes, how you doing, man? Doing good. You know, i uh, Working from home, I never thought it would be so nice to get in your car and drive to the office. But, uh, you know, with four kids and everything else, it's you might hear some screaming in the background. Who yeah, knows? I've got, but, I got four, uh, too, buddy. I got there. There they might we might see we might see one on this video. <laughs> yeah, they could appear behind you at any moment. Right. Well, for those of the those of you all yeah. joining us on watching the video uh, after we record this, this is actually my conference room. This is not a backdrop. I've had a couple people ask me if uh -huh. that was a fake backdrop. I'm able to come in because I come, it's just my wife and I work here in the office, unlike uh, Tim and, uh, and Jay, who work with dozens of people in one central location. So, all right, Tim, I want to I want to jump in because I think you're going to have a couple of unique things to offer uh, people to listen to, not just clients, but also advisors and plan participants. So let's start with where did your career start? Walk us through, quickly through that journey to where you're at now and what your role is with Prime Capital. Yeah, I started back in 1993. I started at Edward Jones back before they had their big growth trajectory. So I had an office in a suburb of Kansas City. Actually, I didn't have an office when I started. They didn't have open offices. So I actually worked out of the trunk of my car. And over a two-year period, I knocked on 1,200 doors. So I go up and knock on the door and introduce myself to people, tell them I was going to open up a business in the neighborhood. About a third of the people would slam the door on me. About a third of the people would stand there and talk to me. About a third of the people would invite me in for milk and cookies. So it's an interesting way to do it. And after about a year, about well, not quite a year, I was producing enough revenue to get an office. And so we opened up an office and I, I managed that office for about almost five years before I, I left there and went over and uh, started with what was called Lawing Financial at the time, which morphed into Prime Capital about three years ago. So Scott Colangelo, who you guys have met, I, I started the Wealth Management Division for Lawing Financial. He started the Qualified Plan Department. And then about 20 years later, give or take, uh, him and I bought Kerry Lawing out from Lawing Financial and rebranded it Prime Capital. And here we are today. Well, Tim, your career starting uh, with door knocking is, is tremendous. That's how a lot of people started. You've been doing this quite a while. You ever seen anything like this? I mean, we're in unprecedented times. What, what have you lived through? It's crazy. But you, know, you think about it, like a lot of like you're probably the same situation, Jay. That you and I are about the same age, maybe. But we, you know, I, I, I started this business. We had the dot com thing. Oh, one. Yeah. And then we had the you had the whole Internet thing in the late 90s. And then you had Y2K. You guys remember Y2K? Oh, yeah. The whole world was going to shut yes. down. Uh, then you had the dot com thing, and then you had September 11th, and then you had 0809. And then we had about nine or 10 years of relative peace, if you want to call it that. And then, then we get thrown into this thing. So, this is about the third, fourth, maybe fifth, depending on how you define a crisis, you know, world event. And I've always said that you can't predict world events. And I don't think that even six, eight weeks ago, if I would have asked people that, you know, nobody would have predicted that this thing hit with this much severity. Is this much economic impact? 
it's been pretty crazy. It has been crazy. Now, with that said, Tim, though, do you feel like, you know, I started telling Jay a few weeks back that, hey, this thing's probably going to get a little bit worse. We, we had an agreement. This thing's going to get a little, a little bit worse, and we need to make some pivots, not just with our clients, but also with our delivery. Part of the reason I said that is I felt like Prime had started, even before the, before the virus really came along, I felt like you all had uh, done a pretty, what, what at the time seemed, seemed pretty prudent, in retrospect, seems pretty smart towards the end of 2019 with your advisory committee. Can you walk through, walk people through a couple of the conversations you had at the time and then how those naturally morphed into once this crisis really started becoming a real tangible thing? Like how, how like client conversations? Yeah, not, no, like the advisory committee, the end of 2019, when you all started looking at asset re- reallocations and rebalancing the portfolios, I don't think at the time you were doing that in a sense that a worldwide pandemic was coming, right? No, but, not at all. But there were some market indications that I think you all were attuned to that maybe the average investor was not. Is that fair? Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, nobody had this, could predict the severity of all this. But, you know, at the end of 19, you know, we've been on a pretty good run. As everybody knows, the equity markets have done real well over that period of time. Um, and so we rebalanced everybody back to where they where they needed to be. So, for example, we had a portfolio that was 60% equity, 40% fixed income. Maybe that ran up to 65 or 70% equity because the market was up. So we brought them back down to that 60-40. We kind of reconfigured everything. We thought, well, it's been a good run. A lot of the riskier fixed income products like the high yield and things of that nature, we reallocated to that. And I don't know that we were as good as we were lucky we're kind of going back to fundamentals after a long run in the market. So I think that helped us weather the storm better than most. You know, we, we compare ourselves to peer groups all the time, and we've held up pretty well during this whole downturn. Well, one of the things that I, I want to kind of mention here um, is we've the volatility we've seen has really been unprecedented the last 30 days. We've seen a little bit of that kind of level out. Previous podcast, we talked about the VIX, and it's gone from, you know, a, a higher range of, of volatility down to a more normal range of volatility. But despite all of that volatility, it's people like you, Tim, and you, Josh, that are urging people to get back to the basics and, and review their plan, have goals, and, and be diversified, and, and make sure that things are going the way they should be on a re- regular and routine basis. That might not be the, uh, the same for somebody in their 60s as it might be for somebody, say, like me in my, my early 40s. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I tell you what, it's been it's pretty interesting. It has definitely made everybody step back and reevaluate their situation. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's going to sometimes can be a bad thing based on the circumstances. But, you know, I, our guys, you know, we remember we went from working in an office environment now where everybody's working remotely. And, you know, we were having investment advisory committee meetings monthly. And now we're having them weekly and we're talking daily. And I think there's going to be a lot of good things that come out of this. I mean, all the advisors have talked to their clients multiple times in a short period, in some cases three, four, five times inside of a three or four week period. And normally you might only talk to a client once a month or once a quarter, depending on how often the client wants to talk. And that's that's created an environment that we've had a lot of client communication. And I can tell you that 99% of the clients, you know, they understand what's going on. I mean, they understand the markets are down and things of that nature, but they also understand that it's not the end of the world. We'll come out of this. And so what we've done is we spent a lot of time communicating with them, repositioning things for when the upswing comes, which looks like maybe you already had part of it. When the upswing comes, though, they'll be positioned in the best place possible to take advantage of it. So there'll be good things that come out of this at some point. Well, that's, ho- that's what I'm hoping to hear and I'm, what I'm hoping to see. But I know we're going to all be kind of watching this thing the next weeks, uh, the next months, maybe even the next years, because there's going to be a lot of things that, that change in our, in our industry as a result of this. Tim, uh, you and I have known each other personally for, for over a couple decades, uh, way prior before my uh, affiliation with Prime Capital Investment Advisors. And I've always held that one of the very unique skills that you have that uh, has always impressed me is you're a team builder. Uh, you're very good at connecting people. You're very good at identifying people's uh, weak, uh, strengths and putting them with other people that have strengths to make a, a pretty good sum of the whole parts. How do you feel that team building aspect I know you didn't assemble the whole team by yourself. You had help along the ways, but I think you were instrumental in assembling the team, the leadership team of Prime Capital. How do you think that's helped you all weather some of this crisis? I think we're super lucky. I mean, the, the, the people, and you're absolutely right, nobody, nobody did it alone. I mean, 
I like to try to take credit for, for assembling some of the team, but it was the team itself that, that assembled itself, if that makes any sense. We have a fantastic team. And, you know, if this would have happened three or four years ago before we had some of the key players in place, I think it would have been a lot harder. I mean, with the CEO, Glenn Spencer, with the operations, Siebel, all the way through the whole organization are all of our investment guys, the people doing the trading. They have stepped up to the plate because we are about as busy now as we could ever be, especially on the administrative side. And I, I kind of pride myself now with the communication that we've put out to our clients. We've been doing multiple webinars per week. We've had all kinds of communication going out to clients pretty much almost on a daily basis. Uh, the website's been updated constantly with, uh, with all of the uh, marketing materials and things of that nature. So without that team of people, if there was just a small group, two or three people trying to do it, there's no way. And I'm, I'm super proud of, of the team that we've assembled and what they've accomplished during all this. Well, we know it takes a, it takes a lot of people to, to kind of take care of things and, and teamwork is certainly going to be uh, important today and, and moving forward. Uh, so kudos to you and, and for, for developing that and building that and continue to build upon it. Your communication efforts are fantastic. And, and people like Josh out there in the advisor community serving the Gulf Coast, doing the same thing for his clientele and his prospecting, prospective clients. Well, and Tim, you don't know this, but Jay and I got asked to be on a local uh, radio show last, last week on a pretty prominent detox station in this area, they wanted us to come on and talk about how had we made the transition to being able to communicate and service our clients electronically. And you know, when I came on to Prime, one of the, the drums I was beating was that not that technology is ever going to replace human to human, face to face contact and relationships, but it's a key driver for how people are finding our services it's a key driver for how people are getting comfortable with us as advisors. Little did I know that it would become a huge factor in how clients, potential clients, were staying in communication with not only their advisors, but the, the team behind the advisors. So I want to give credit where credit is due because Prime Capital Investment Advisors allowed me to take the electronic apparatus that I had built, combine it with everything that you had already done uh, on the various platforms where we, are, where we can. I don't want to do this forever but I literally can run my office 100% remotely. How do you feel about that? Was that intentional? Did you all put all that in place? Well, you know, the thing about it is we had disaster recovery stuff in place, you know, in case the building hits, a, hits by a tornado or there's a flood or whatever, you know, all these different things. We've had that in place for a while. Never did I ever imagine that we'd be using it in this type of scenario. And I mean, we're all lucky that everybody has high speed internet and cell phones and everything. It's actually gone very well that we took this entire operation and running it remotely and it's gone I mean, I'm knocking on wood here, but it's it's gone fantastic. I mean, it's there's a lot of there's a lot of these Zoom calls that we're doing. I've I've become an expert at Zoom and GoToMeeting and Google Hangouts. That I, but I think what's going to come out of that is we're going to use this a lot more. I can see I can see myself using a lot more of these um, a, a lot more often with both clients, pro, prospective clients, and within the firm. No doubt about it. It's been huge. We've done the same thing at our company, First Protective. 100% of our workforce is, is remote. Uh, the only thing that deters our efforts is the, uh, the southern April thunderstorm shower that rolls through our area where it disrupted some of our connectivity issues, especially yesterday after the weekend storm. So hopefully if the, you know, the good Lord takes care of us and keeps our, uh, our weather nice, we can continue to work remotely for this uh, specified period of time. But you know, one thing is we kind of have a couple of other questions here for you. I, I'd have to ask Tim, what do you think is the future of independent registered investment advisors, knowing that so many of those now like a, like a Josh are seeing some of the fruits of their labor. Do we, I've seen it just kind of expand in my area. Are you seeing the same? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that that's the route that pretty much uh, any entrepreneurial type advisor is going to go that route simply because, you know, you, you want the resources of a firm behind you to provide all the compliance and the legal and the investment management, but you also want the autonomy to go out and do the, the types of things like, like what you guys are doing. You know, there's obviously compliance things that are in every industry, but the independent RIA, with, without a doubt, in my mind, is, is the best track to be on right now. No doubt. Yeah, I've had to, I've had to use the, alert, the word may uh, quite a bit, uh, inserted that word into my vocabulary. We may see volatility. We may have market turmoil. We may or might. Everything's uh, hypothetical, right? That's yeah. right. That's right. In my opinion... I think if this crisis has taught us anything is that relationships matter. 
you know, Tim, I think I expressed this to you in a text a week or two ago in that as of right now, in my opinion, as a financial advisor, I've actually never had more value than right this minute. Not that I wasn't valuable last year, the year before, or any of the other time period of my life, but when things are always going well, your value kind of gets lost a little bit. You've been through these times when, you know, in your career, uh, and my last question to you, when do you, when do you feel you were most valuable or do you feel pretty valuable right now? How do you feel about that? Oh, no doubt about it. It's, it's times like this where you build the relationships. And this is a relationship business because you're talking about people's money and people's money is a very personal thing to them. And without the relationship, you really don't have anything in my opinion. And this is the time when you can call people during this crisis or whatever we're calling it. And you can, you know, talk them off a ledge or just have a conversation with them and kind of bring it down to reality. Because, you know, anybody can go out and buy shares of Amazon or Google or whatever. And that's not what it's all about. It's about understanding those people, understanding their needs, understanding what makes them tick and advise them to do the right thing at the right time. So right now, it's impossible to add it. You know, th this 08, 09 and, 2000, and September 11th are probably the three things that are that are the markers in my career that I'll never forget. Right. And But because you've stayed on top of it and stayed in communication with your clients and stayed out in the forefront, don't you feel like you came out of all of those with, you're, go, you're already moving? No doubt about it. I mean, what it does when you're, in, when you're in a situation like this is it exposes any kind of weaknesses or cracks in the organization and magnifies them. And then you can, which makes it as a leader, a leadership position, makes it a little easier to fix you know, what's going on here because you're, you're having stress on everything. And so what is it that we need to shore up? And so, uh, you know, you need to learn from it. And we've learned from it. We haven't done everything perfectly, but it's, it's worked out pretty well. So there's things, I have a pretty good list right here of the things that we're working on to make this better. And six months from now, three months from now, we'll be better because of it. It's painful to get to do it that way, but we will be better because of it. Right. Well, we're, I'm going to go ahead and land it this way, Tim. I mean, part of my appreciation for Prime Capital Investment Advisors is that the fact that you all allowed me as an independent advisor to be on multiple different platforms, which at the time seemed great. Didn't realize how crucial it would be now because... Jay can tell you this, between our social media presence, our Facebook, our LinkedIn, our, even our Instagram accounts, between our podcast on the various platforms it's on, between our YouTube, between our website, we've got people reaching out to us all over the place looking for help. That makes you feel good. It makes you feel like people are listening. It makes, oh, yeah. feels like you can do something. We, we said this on the previous podcast. None of us on this, on this screen right now is a nurse or a doctor. We're not one of those that are walking right into the the lion's den of this virus thing. So much due respect and admiration for those folks doing that. What we can provide is some clarity and some guidance when it comes to money, because as this stuff starts to, to, to ease, eventually ease, uh, as your, your co-part Scott uh, Colangelo said, a lot of the illnesses and stress can come from money stress, right? The point of the show, Tim, was to cut through and clarify some of the noise surrounding the financial services industry. And I think you just did that beautifully. So, and, and, the, and the risk management industry, you know, that that's the part of the world that I get to serve, guys. Um, I, I, I will interject here that a lot of time on people's hands right now, sitting at home, looking at their planning. Part of that is looking at their risk management plans. I will tell you that uh, life insurance applications in the last two to three weeks through our firm uh, have ticked up. Uh, that's a lot of term life insurance. It's people realizing, oh, man, I, I thought I had that in place and I don't have it. Or I thought I had this much and I don't. Uh, and there's a lot of people who are saying, I used to have that through my employer, and now I don't. Um, so keep that in mind on the risk management side. Basic family needs protection planning is is definitely in vogue during a pandemic like this. No doubt, as it should be all the time. Yeah, I agree. Well, very good. So if you all would like to reach out to the show, you can text or leave a message at 251-327-2124. Plus, you can visit Gulf Coast fa.com that's fa is a financial advisor or you can go to pciawealth.com there you can find uh, actually you can find tim's bio there yeah. and hear this podcast and all our other podcasts i want to say this there's a couple little extra notes i throw in here tim because we have a pretty diverse listenership i don't know i know you're busy and i know you don't necessarily dive into the podcast world like jay and i do but we have a lot of you know for me i'm obviously putting this out there hopefully that the uh, retail client either a client or, or a potential client is listening and see some of value or, or maybe could use, you know, could use my help, right? Jay uh, works with advisors and independent and semi-independent agents all along the Gulf Coast. And this is a great way for him to show the value 
that he brings to guys like me, quite, quite honestly. For you, I don't know if you'd like to say maybe just a quick word about you know, what, you, what is the value proposition for prime capital investment advisors for some of the advisors out there maybe already independent or looking at going independent? Yeah, I mean, if you're looking to, to be part of a team like we talked about before, you want to join a group of, uh, I say like-minded because it's a fairly diverse group of professionals. We have a lot of resources. I mean, it's tough to make it. Like we talked about before, it's tough to make it on your own. I don't know how anyone ever did it on their own. I mean, I certainly didn't do it on my own. But if you're looking to join a good, a good group of people, it's a great culture. It's a good people to be around. I enjoy talking to them and interacting with them every day. By all means, reach out to us. We'd love to chat with you. Very, very good. All right. Well, another show in the can. Uh, again, thank you to Tim Hakes, the president and co-owner of Prime Capital Investment Advisors and Qualified Plan Advisors for joining us. Tim, you did a great job as always. You always put a smile on my face, man, and I appreciate that. That means a lot. I uh, also want to thank uh, Johnny Gwynn, our, our producer of Deep Fried Studios. I am missing me some Deep Fried Studios. I don't know about you, Jay, but I miss being <laughs> in that studio, man. That's uh, my co-host, Jay Stubbs. And then lastly, just a huge shout out to all of y'all that have been joining us on this journey. Obviously, Jay and I did not see this curveball coming. I don't think anybody really did. And I hope you all know that we are putting out content that if you'll take a minute to listen to it, it's going to give you some tips and ideas to help you come out of this thing with some momentum. The last thing you want to do right now is stick your head in the sand. The last thing you want to do is throw your hands up in the air. There are people dealing with things on the illness side that there's not things that I can say that are going to make a lot of difference. But there are things, if you are if you are moving forward and you've got a, an occupation or maybe you're looking at a time of occupational change, we've had some phenomenal guests on. We've had some phenomenal tips and some leaders. Take this stuff and run with it. Have some momentum when you come out of this. That's what we're trying to do. So thank you all that have joined us on this. Thank you all that are joining us now. This has been Every Dollar Counts with Josh and Jay. Advisory services offered through Prime Capital Investment Advisors, LLC, PCIA, a federally registered investment advisor. PCIA doing business as Prime Capital Wealth Management, PCWM, and Qualified Plan Advisors, QPA. Gulf Coast Financial Advisors is independent of Prime Capital Advisors. Information presented for educational purposes only is not an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any securities. All investments involve risk and unless otherwise stated, be sure to consult a tax professional before implementing any tax or investment strategies.